When many alcoholics think about the Bible and liquor, they assume Jesus drank wine. Therefore, they can drink 5%, 10%, 20%, and even 40% alcoholic beverages and feel justified in doing so. This is more so out of ignorance and a total disregard of some basic facts about wine in the scripture. This is why 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In which it then goes on to say, to shun profane and vain babblings, which can be shown clearly in the example we have gone over. Now the Lord says in Isaiah 65 verse 8, new wine is found in the cluster. And when we turn to Matthew 26 verse 29 at the Lord's Supper, the Lord says again, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The type of wine that Jesus drank is not your store-bought, chemically processed, high-percentaged alcohol. Essentially, the wine that Jesus drank was grape juice. Let's turn to another verse that is commonly used by those who aim to justify their consumption. 1 Timothy 5 verse 23 Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and thine often infirmities. The key to understanding the passage is to go beyond, but use a little wine, as it is clear that the emphasis is on a little, as much wine would lead to drunkenness, which is warned against in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 10, saying that drunkards shall not inherit the kingdom of God. One of the purposes for wine, as demonstrated here, is the medicinal uses that it has, as the grapes that are used contains antioxidants and has anti-inflammatory qualities. This also prevents certain risks of heart failure and diseases, but of course, that's in moderation and not in abuse. A factor to be considered is wine back then was not nearly as strong and processed as wines today. And those drinks were naturally and not chemically altered as they are now. Let's get into the issue further by turning to some more passages. Proverbs 31 verses 4 to 5. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. When we turn to 1 Peter 2, it says that we are of a royal priesthood. When we turn throughout the New Testament as well, when it comes to judging the lost world and giving them the knowledge of their sin, we need to have righteous and clear judgment that is not affected. It should be finally said that the impairment of drunkenness is damaging to the witness of God's influence in your life. And it is important that as we follow Christ, we need to do so with a sober and clear mind, focused on him and keeping him in all our thoughts.